Okay, so starting recording. So we're going to continue the discussion on open enterprise, the enterprise seminar here. Uh, and we, we start by saying, why are we here? So collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. The, the enterprise session reflects that. So the initial idea idea behind it was what what is a project that we can collaborate on t with in, with in terms of enterprise development and the original idea is of course the CD co home so I'd like to see if we can go that direction we talked about the 3d printer as a lower brow uh, less advanced project we can collaborate on but I, I would say that we think about it in a modular way think about what are the assets that are needed for an enterprise and, and start co-creating them because that's the whole idea so I would I would just propose we go right forward on the <clears throat> on the CD co home um, as the whole project it's something that that does require a lot of different assets but I mean if we treat it modularly we can talk about okay what do you need to to market or to produce a product I mean you need a website you need various enterprise development assets we have uh, so we do have a development spreadsheet that we typically fill out for enterprise development starting with va your value proposition how do you go about it then economic analysis all the kinds of thing that, things that go into a business plan how do you market your marketing copy your website sales production um, all of that um, so I don't know I, maybe we can gather around that what do people think think about that um, since we came here for the CD home might as well work on the uh, CD Cajon <laughs> um, so as, the, as the main yeah what are the thoughts I'd say like it depends like what's what are you expecting or the commit first of all like mm. a couple things like what's the commitment like after the this apprenticeship ends because you know we can all dedicate our time during but after, after if you want us to say after then that's a different conversation and then second is like well, okay what's the business structure uh, how do we manage ownership and, and responsibilities, especially as this goes longer term? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all good questions. All good questions. Now, if we look at the mission of distributed enterprise, I think the safest way to go about it is do that, like assume that, because we don't have any of those things defined, right? So is there anything we can go forward with at all, given those kinds of agreements are not clear? And I think the answer is yes. And the answer is creating gen generic assets that anyone can plug in because we're modular. So think about like we're designing modular houses, devise a modular enterprise that somebody can take that, run with it here, run with it anywhere else. But all of us need that. All of us need those collaborative assets to make it happen. So, because we don't have those questions, and without those questions, we couldn't really go forward. But the only thing you, you can go forward on is we're developing an open core that we can draw from but also some very explicit assets like okay say Joshua or Paul makes a website well let's make it a clonable website something that you can put on WordPress or whatever uh, easily replicated so it's not some proprietary infrastructure it's something that any one of us can replicate like if they they produce their own website uh, why not produce a website for everybody that we can use so this is Joshua's CD Eco Home operation. This is Marchin's or OSE's CD Eco Home operation. And then as we actually get the product and fill those assets in, we can talk about further agreements. But initially, I think it's about the assets. There, you know, what do people think about that? Is it, can we treat it like a, a modular construction set? The, I mean, the way I look at it in my mind is all these things have to happen. We don't have them. It's in our interest, like, okay, talk about not, talking about incentive structures, what is our interest um, in that? What is the incentive that drives us all to do it? And I would venture to say that that is all those assets that we could run with, which we are developing already. It's like the product we're developing, right? Um, but then the more directly related items to business are things like your website, here's your product photo shoot, which you know we can maybe start with the first CD go home and shoot more products shoot on that since that's getting looking better and better with with time um, all the different assets like this so w w what do people think about that yeah. 
Does that make sense? Does this kind of logic make sense? Because I mean, it makes makes perfect sense to me. It seems like imagine we even like okay, not knowing what the commitment is going to be in the future. Like ideally, the commitment would be well, we can succeed at, it and therefore we can actually run these these enterprises. And, and that's that's something we want to start with as as a as an outcome that we're aiming for. Uh, but whatever happens, even if people go their different directions, like Joshua was saying, like, oh, why don't we all, like, do everything together? Well, we don't have to. We can create as much as each of us is willing to in a voluntary sense. Like, it's um, it's this concept of, like, Marx talks about alienation for compensation. No, we're not doing that. We're doing self-determination in this game. And we're producing assets that are relevant and all of us can share. Because if we had enough people doing that, then this would be the best enterprise in the world if everyone in that group was, was open. So the thing is here, we are open to that. That's, that's the intent. And then the next intent would be to, well, let's attract more and more people to this and the remote collaborators and anyone else who wants to produce openly for the whole world. Uh, I think that's the value of how we attract more and more people to accrete to this mass of goodness so that it becomes a pool that anyone can draw from. It's a, it's a non-scarce product. It's this enterprise idea which would improve over time. So, so I don't think it gets scarce like, oh, well, what if we just solve housing already? Well, well, then you just saved yourself half a million bucks over your lifetime. Move on to the next thing, you know? move on to the next thing that makes life easy for everybody or make games now okay we've got housing we can do it dirt cheap now we need to open source telecoms and microchips so we can make our <laughs> make our own <laughs> that work with LoRaWAN and Magma because that stuff is out actually what's that? Uh, there's some developments with, with open well not open source but hardware where you can have your own communication network so 5G yes. uh, with Magma and LoRaWAN and at LoRaWAN is the Internet of Things part of that. So like these are hardwares or software. Hardware and software. Mm. So um, yeah, people are making different hardware models to be routers, and so you know, yeah, you can look into building your own routers. Yeah, and use yeah. I mean, there's no limit to what can be done, and and I think we have a chance to set an example, like because nobody's really I don't know any anything comparable to this where people are saying we're doing distributive open enterprise because all the co-ops are proprietary I mean I don't know of a single open co-op like Mondragon the most successful cooperative it's all proprietary information proprietary <coughs> products still what are they so they're doing? they're doing all kinds of products from appliances to seed I, I think they're, they're like all over the place they're like a general almost like a general store but Mondragon cooperatives in in Spain that is that's that's perhaps the most well-known one uh, as a very successful cooperative that's got a co cooperative business structure but I was never excited about that because what about collaborative co cooperative and open source or collaborative or transparent doesn't meet our meet <laughs> doesn't meet our mission of what we do so uh, a lot of people are excited about the cops the social good stuff but I mean I don't really believe you can have true social good without being collaborative open I mean, that's that's our that's what that's, uh, that's our of, prejudice. That's, that no, kind of the, that's kind of the rule of thumb. With um, if you're starting a new enterprise, you just look at what competitors are out there, and you read um, whatever potential case studies there are for any businesses that are similar. But OSC is kind of <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> nothing. There's like not really it. much that's going to be out there. Yeah, so. yeah, but that's great. You know, we're we're filling a niche that I think in the future will be more common, but now it's not so common. You know, all the relief efforts and everything, like all these social good efforts that have proprietary products, it's <clears throat> somewhat of a contradiction. Um, but, so so what do you guys think? Well, just the concept, so this modular enterprise concept, well, we we're contributing assets to the pool. We yeah. start with money. I'm, I, you know, I want to I wanna be open, open and collaborative, open. but I want to earn money. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a natural uh, assumption. We're not yeah. going to make something that doesn't allow us to survive. Okay. That's that's in there, so we have to get there, right? So how do we make money? So so I, I'm thinking that if we throw things into the pot, uh, out of that comes the ability to generate money, like like open cores, I guess, comparable to open cores. People can take that and, and make money. But here, develop. It's I think we're more than open cores. We're open cores plus business development. Like we're throwing that in the pot too. Um, 
it better be the outcome or I quit. I'm moving back to the city. <laughs> if that's not the case, I mean, we got to have to make a living uh, somehow, right? I mean, I don't, I'm not opposed to money, I'm not opposed to revenue or, or economic power. No, we have to get a lot of economic power indeed so, to, to so make any change. Like, so the typical like corporation might uh, ask for some like royalty or um, subscription, but these are like adverse to the, the goals of distributed enterprise. Right. We don't, we don't want to charge other people to use uh, our technology. So then the, I think the question arises, okay, like how do, how do we scale um, without leveraging other people? If we can't leverage, if we can't extract financial value scalable it, through that way, like what, that way we can't scale financial, financially that way, how, do we, how can we scale financially? You have to charge for something. So while the resources like information are free, our time is not. If we're producing things, if we're harvesting something like soil, turning it into block, or harvesting or making lumber and making houses, that's that's a scarce resource. It's physical. We put our energy into it. We got to get paid for it. So um, it boils down to, I mean, the simple thing is, it's, what are the numbers? What's the revenue model? Like well, you know, we have all these ideas. Like trading, trading time for money. And that's just like a salary. I don't know if but, that's a business. But that's the thing. There has to be something of well, value ex exchange. So it doesn't necessarily have to be money, I guess, in some situations. But could some, be in kind. Some value. There's nine forms of capital. Look at um, the wiki, nine forms of capital. Um, but yeah, I mean... Well, right now there's money that lubricates the world like yeah we can we can create uh, various blockchain based things that are based on physical realities too like uh, if we ever create money and it should be based I think it should be based on physical stuff that's uh, because it's easiest to measure that way um, otherwise everything is non-scarce um, yeah um, could you repeat that point about money uh, think it should be physically based? I like the idea of, uh, if you look at OSC Bank okay. <laughs> on the wiki, we've already got a bank design here. No, it's it's a concept, right? So so what is OSC Bank? concept is you develop a facility like this and 10,000 worldwide that have an economy, right? When you have an economy, you can create your own bank. You can coin your money, you can back it by the physical assets. Yeah. that you have on there yeah so we don't need money we just need access to capital things that yeah help us. yeah that's that's correct and an easy way to get them is with more money or we can earn them or you know settle <laughs> settle some uh, yeah i mean well, we need yeah, some capital that's, somehow that's why capital I'm could be land could be could be money but we need capital the things yeah. that money can buy yeah uh, but but that's the idea of um, currency it, right now, like you said, Odundo, that, uh, well, Bitcoin is kind of funny money because it's not backed by anything tangible. It's backed by an idea. An idea, idea maybe is perhaps prone to manipulation, uh, whereas if you back it by something abundant but, but real, like grain or gold or steel, or just the fact that you have an infrastructure, a documented infrastructure. So I'm saying that the open source panopticon, where you have, where you have actually transparency of what your production capacity is, that, to me, like if I were to look at that, there's another campus of this nature somewhere, and I see their transparent documentation on their website, pictures of their site, pictures of their infrastructure, and I know they have like open source tool chains, microfactory, land, resources there that they know how to tap because <coughs> machines are not important not enough they you got to know how to use them or somebody has to use them it could be an AI or whatever but you got to have a system where value is capable of being generated to meet basic needs like you need to eat and then have a house and probably drive a car or fly around or something um, or have your computers <coughs> uh, but if I were to see that open documentation somewhere I would say yeah I'll trade with you I'll, I'll give you my funny money for yours I'll give you the OSC coin and then you can send me some of your goodies 
and then if you send me some of your monies I'll send you some because I also know it's good and we can have maybe like exchange rates or whatever but it should be like should be like a basic unit uh, you know you can just define something it's like a pound of steel is a dollar a pound of tomatoes is a dollar a so, brick is a dollar you know whatever like, so the currency is backed by instead of like arbitrary gold somewhere it's backed by whatever resources I mean, the group of people in involved with OSC and like the collective have so like yeah. if I have a bunch of grain yeah. you have a bunch of yeah. machines and, and that you can estimate some value off of that that's yeah but it should be integrated like grain is a specific example that's kind of like from you know from long ago it's like you got grain well now you can have like a hundred different things it could be a, a pool of different things because the small micro factory can produce a lot of things say it can produce a refrigerator and a cordless drill and all kinds of other things and a hammer you know like th that productive capacity or the capacity to produce natural to produce or process natural resources that's really the capital that's the important capital right and you're buying anyway with the money that's yeah not really so we don't need money we need the things that money can buy right so you can like the resource-based economy concept is that oh yeah well you're kind of bypassing that money you're going straight to the resources and so what some people we, call that the collectivist dream we could do an experience based we could do experience based revenue um so what i mean by that is say say we sell a house maybe maybe instead of um trying to make a profit on it we have some stipulation that um, you're required to like um, like allow access to a room for some amount of time to someone working on open source or something like could that. be it's a, it's an agreement or a contract yeah I you know one way you can describe this is a contract based enterprise community that's kind of like the um, who says that kind of stuff the free market people would call it that that's from that perspective um, but it's agreements contracts are agreements that you agree okay uh, you give me this value I give you this value so it could be like that it's, it's, see because what I would want is like basically a net, an Airbnb type network where uh, where you don't have to pay like fifty dollars a night you know that, mm -hmm. that's incredibly that would be incredibly valuable to me to be able to travel freely mm -hmm. yeah, yeah like if I was yeah. in an agreement with another community like who yeah. you respect um, you know, maybe not 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 again cooperative, but um, someone who's some other a OSC longer mission. Let's say there are multiple OSC yeah. campuses, and you know someone that's contributed a lot to one campus, that would let them have the right to sort of like stay for a certain amount of time at other OSC. Yeah, campuses. absolutely, absolutely. If we will be friendly to each other, I mean, why not? Uh, we're assuming that we probably have in, enough infrastructure here that okay, at that point we're pretty much autonomous, sustainable. We're pursuing self determination because we can have food and fuel in a car or whatever we do and a computer and and shelter and all that that's like well, we some non-issue it doesn't have to be just being friendly I would say that it's important to be like numerically rigorous and assign the value sure 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 which could be a market value I mean, sure so that people you know feel valued if they are doing a work exchange program you know they know the exact value that um, the getting of it and then other people you know can buy in you know I have friends who say like oh I'd like to visit you at OSC uh, do they charge tickets and I said like no would you like to buy a ticket to come see OSC and, and they would and there are people who would come stay here for Airbnb yeah to do like maker tourism I mean, sure it's not as big as other kinds of tourism but you know there's yeah there's science tourism there's people go to places oh absolutely for a place of Bon Jovi you know, like there there's a market for everything so yeah absolutely and it's about understanding a value proposition and capturing its value. Airbnb model, that's, I mean, we're kind of thinking about that, like some of the houses, we have, or if we build a new CD go home, that's perfect place for maybe Airbnb or revenue from that or the, the hacker tourism. Um, sure. I mean, that's what we do is we kind of do that already in some way. Uh, like, for example, people come for the Summer X, we are going to build a couple of cabins and we're charging people like 25 bucks a night to stay in the cabin because it's going to be their private cabin as opposed to living here. Sure. All of us want to get, we'll keep our, our private rooms and then build a couple of more cabins and stuff like that. But renovating the huts down there could be another thing. Um, but that's the general idea here is we're all collaborating to a pool, like say the CD Go Home is a revenue model, and then we sprout one of our campuses elsewhere because now we know how to make money to, to get the land for it and so forth. You know, we got to um, kind of exist in this economy until we transcend it. But it does, it's not going to take a lot of money. It's like maybe a billion dollars total. <laughs> you know, it's a small fraction of what a big company makes. So 
I mean, the numbers are quite tangible, but we have to get specific to, to okay, uh, in my view, it's like, it's in our interest, I see the clear interest here that we do want to live freely and, and then therefore we want to collaborate on an enterprise that gets us all through. And that's, that's I think, a compelling reason to, to say, okay, let's throw some, some resources into a pool, basically a pool of our work, like all the different aspects of the, the enterprise that we can bring t to the table. And uh, we go with that. And that would work better, like, you know, if we had more than, like, 10 people here, right? If we had 100 or 1,000, I mean, we could probably come up with something. I mean, where where do you see, like, a 1,000 people collaborating on an enterprise? I mean, you don't. I think the potential of something like that is huge, where we put, put in that one-tenth of a percent, and we still got something that works, perhaps, you know? Um, so that's, that's the idea behind this concept of collaborative enterprise development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I'm just thinking that uh, one of I'm just thinking back to some of the problems that open source hardware projects run into. Mm -hmm. and I think that uh, one of the things we have to do is uh, um, if we're going to sell a product, mm -hmm. uh, a physical product, it's mm -hmm. got to be a niche product um, because I don't see how. Um, you get away from the problem of economies of scale. Um, because what's happened with other open source hardware projects, I think I mentioned this before, is how bigger companies pick up on the, the project and take away the margin. Um, and so when we're thinking about the enterprise that we're wanting to work on, I mean, that's, that's one thing that I feel like protects the open source uh, <laughs> aspect is, um, or at least it protects the open source business model, is looking at niche products, or at least looking at something that's customizable. Um, because then I can produce a certain kind of this product, and <coughs> somebody else can produce a certain kind, or maybe it's just best to be produced lo locally instead of um, on a larger scale. Do, do you think the CD Go Home would qualify for that product? Um, it, I think it could. Uh, my, I mean, I'm seeing headwinds with uh, the CD Go Home because right now, I, I mean, I'm curious what is the price of uh, materials with the price of lumber right now. Um, there's a uh, there's a lot to get to. First, you have to replace some of the materials we have to like sure it, it could be a very affordable product if um, there's plastic lumber um, we're not at that point yet no. but everyone has the disadvantage right now right so we're still right and, but uh, I mean there's also uh, that is that is one of the things that's going to cut into the the margin and it's also one of the things that um, has kept a lot of people from building right now there's also a shortage of buildable land in the metropolitan areas. Um, so, I mean, at the moment, I just, I'm thinking, what is the, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm curious, actually, what is the goal, um, generally speaking, of the uh, CD Eco Home? I know you've said uh, to solve housing, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking specifically, what does that mean? Does that mean... Uh, reducing the cost of construction? Does it mean... Why, well, um, for that, you clearly have to look at solving housing on the wiki. What does it say? So what is solving let's housing? See. Let's take a look at that. Um, so that's the definition of solving housing. Take a look at this doc. There's an embedded doc in there. Okay. Start is the highest quality home and the high, at the lowest possible cost. So let's let's read that. Well, it's, that, it's this is value proposition. That's like, what do you got? Here's my value proposition. Um, so, <coughs> we're enabling anyone in the world build, to build dignified housing at the lowest possible cost, as unencumbered by lack of access to rapid learning materials, designs, building techniques, construction materials, machines for construction, etc i.e. availing open source designs for houses, associated construction machines, build techniques and machines for producing building materials while creating a feedback loop that allows the ecosystem to learn and improve and creating an opportunity for house builders and job training to lift anyone anywhere out of poverty and place them on top on top of thriving 
create lives worth living both in the first and fourth worlds and to do this globally with global input to identifying blocks and addressing them on a, as a global community. So different places might have different issues regarding housing. And to create a movement entrepreneurs who work on solving housing starting now. <laughs> okay. Together we must identify issues, some of which we already know. Poverty, meaning some people never get the opportunity to get their own house as they are preoccupied just with surviving. In the U.S. it's a lot of NIMBY. Like in the West, there's a lot of affordable housing gets canned because that means ghetto. Affordable housing means ghetto to city councils. Debt, in that housing is expensive. Cost, in that no sane builders build affordable housing because they can make more money building more expensive housing. Mm -hmm. Speculation and financialization. In the economic incentives, encouraging spec builders. That means builders who build a house then find a customer as opposed to work with a client up front, which w we want to do. I don't want to get into spec housing because it's a different game. That's a game you can play, but I don't think the dynamics are as good. It's not about the customer, it's about making money. Speculate. So uh, spec builders that treat land like a commodity as opposed to treating it as a case for regenerative development. Disintegration of the profit process making cost high where the design guy does not build the house and does, n does not design a house like the builder would like to build it. And it's inefficient. So, More than that, the engineer is not the designer, the designer is not the builder, the builder is not the materials provider, the builder is not the user. A fully disintegrated production chain that cannot result in closed loop production cycles. There's also the lack of skilled labor making ho house costs high. Page two. Lack of practice of best practice. As the industry is not open source, how do you like that? We lack the practice of best practice because we do not share the best information. Central planning schemes where city councils, county boards plan segregated communities while they imbibe inclusivity in words only. Lack of innovation where light frame construction has not gained much improvement since the latter 19th century. That's a, that's a fact. Uh, lack of comprehensive digital open design where in a digital age builders typically don't extract BOMs from CAD but leave that to the builder, which is inefficient. Financing costs, mortgages that can be paid back, can be paid back, and banks foreclose. Though I'm not sure about that, because if you look at the long-term term cost of a mortgage, a lot of times the inflation is so high that it's like you're not paying much more than you started with. I don't know. That's. I, I looked at those numbers and I was like, holy cow! It's. I thought it was a huge issue, but if the inflation is bad, it's not a, not a, not a bad issue. Issue. But then. Of course, the entire economy is collapsing anyway, so well, <laughs> you've got high, high inflation. Else as well. like you have so, your housing, but you have like cost of living in general that will yeah. finish you off. <laughs> yeah, so just to finish off the, the issue, what we're trying to solve for. So, yeah, I mentioned that if unless rates are as high as 10% or so for loans, you save money because devaluing due to inflation. There's, yeah. That's some truth to, truth to that. But that's just future generations paying for today's well-being. Access to land is an issue. Land around jobs and education is expensive. So you can find plenty of cheap land, not in desirable places. Mm -hmm. Urban deserts, no trees or healthy food. Solution, land stewardship, land trust, community green space for recreation and growing. Resource sink. Houses are resource sinks. Why not make each house productive? Energy, water, food, products with your micro factory. Here's where integrated landscaping, food, aquaponic greenhouse system can make a difference as we recycle nutrients on a small scale. And the garage scale micro factory that cannot so much produce but redesign for cy cyclic materials cycles using common components. So that's kind of like, uh, that's why I think solving housing will be. Let's throw it all in there. Production and stuff like that. I try to break that down into uh, point by point. Um, so there's more detail on that there. Um, but that's some of the things we know about housing. Uh, so I, I don't agree. Like I don't know, you're saying, "Oh man, they're going to gobble us up." No, man. The distributed production is the part that I think they can't. If you ha if you operate at scale, you got diseconomies of scale. This is "Small Is Beautiful" by Schumacher. Uh, you know that book? No, I don't. You got to read it. It's about things break down at a certain scale. Right. You can't avoid it. Yeah. I, I do not believe that centralized production can compete anywhere close with distributed manufacturing. Right. I don't think so. Okay. We thought about this uh, 
when uh, I threw this idea to Wes about open source software competing with uh, um, uh, software from large software companies. And what it what occurred to me is that um, one of the reasons why open source software is so successful is because you don't have to spend any money um, developing it. You can have a bunch of people who um, work on it in their free time. And so what you end up having is a base of developers who form a team that's comparable to what you find at some of those large companies. Yeah. Um, and so it's not really an underdog story. It's, no. it's, uh, it's something that's only natural. Uh, and yet, I mean, open software, open source software is um, isn't dominating everywhere. Um, there are still uh, cases where mm -hmm. uh, bigger companies still dominate. Mm -hmm. And so, it is a matter. I mean, it's, it's not going to apply in every market. Is the, what I'm seeing. Oh uh, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe not. We know it can apply to various markets. Yeah, I mean, there might be ones that are more favorable to it, ones that are less. Right, and I'm just trying to find like what is the path of least resistance. What is <laughs> if we're yeah, trying but to find, uh, yeah. yeah, like what is it? Like, can you name something yeah. better? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said yourself things that have old technology. Are easy yeah. to replace that don't change fast. Yeah, housing is one of them. Yeah, it's ripe for disruption. Okay. So nailing down the concept of common pool stone soup, and so here's the other assumption in this work, and it's about the big hairy audacious goals about large problems because. You can get people to show up to large problems. The smaller it is, the less people are going to show up. So we can have, for solving housing, just about anybody can show up. Mm -hmm. The smaller it is, like we thought first about this cordless drill thing, but man, yeah, yeah it's cool, but most people don't even use a drill, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So this pool is much smaller. The, the stakes are high, but then you can, I think that the projects where the stakes are high, that's where open source can really produce spectacular results because I think the problem is still about getting people to show up. Still haven't solved it really for hardware. Yeah. We will have after we've got a thousand people in our apprenticeships. Not yet. Yeah. I There's think not it's, enough people. That it's really the material cost that's um, keeping more people from contributing to open source hardware projects. Material costs, they're real. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas if, if I wanted to contribute to Ubuntu, I just uh, create an account on uh, a website and start contributing. Yeah, yeah, different costs. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, you can still contribute by trying to make edits or recommendations to the design. The, you, well, that's true. There's a large <laughs> aspect of it that is digital, and you don't build it until you have the full design. Right. But how do like you make the, it accessible to yeah. like interface? Oh, you have to go and look at look at the design of FreeCAD. <laughs> no, Wes's yeah. game. Wes's game could right. do it. Yeah. There's various tools which we can uh, use to make this accessible. So that's where the creativity has to come in and hard work to make it work. Like Apple got good at interface, right? So this is about putting an interface that people can participate with and and the tools that. Are produced also have a good interface for people to interact with. That's something that could be de developed collaboratively. So the prototyping part costs, but there's, like I tried to mention the other day, I think I was saying, like have that ratio of, of design to, to build time really high, mm -hmm. like 99 to 1. It's like really high. We need uh, to, to build the houses faster if we're going to make more. Yeah, yeah. So we have to get really good at, okay, how exactly? And make sure all the de details are ironed out. And then there's various automation things we can do. Mm -hmm. 
like the 3D printing. That's why I think that, that could be very important for this. But 3D printer. Um, you were mentioning yesterday some of the advantages of 3D printer uh, relative to the other, the competitors. Uh, could you uh, elaborate on that? Yeah. There's two, th um, off the top of my head, two things. One is the extruder, which has got the shortest distance between the drive gear and the tip of the nozzle. So the problem statement with, like for us, we want to print rubber, which is soft. The softer it is, think about pushing a no noodle through because it's, there's a little drive gear that drives the filament down. Mm -hmm. It's melted and escapes the nozzle. Well, if it's soft enough, then it will crumple up on you. You can't push it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep the distance between the, the drive gear an extruder nozzle to the minimum and, uh, and I described that at under universal gearless extruder um, there's OSC history and then there would ideally be That, yeah, that's that's one thing. So, which means if rubber is one of the materials we play with, like for tires, that's important, very important. Uh, so that is that's pretty good. We have the shortest that that distance is the shortest, I think. And we I don't have explicit data because I don't have these other extruders, but I can tell you the other ones I use. They cannot do anything like this, um, like the Titan Arrow. Uh, because that distance is very small, just minimize it, then you get less clogs and you can free your clogs very easily if you because it's transparent, you can literally see like where it enters and where it leaves. And there's never never downtime. So I think that's a huge value proposition. And then the second part is the heated bed, which which right now we're using a a what do you call it? A halogen bulb. Uh, it's in so it's insulated, so it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. And then we're using a, a bulb which is radiant heat, which means super quick. Like, typically it takes much longer for the bed to heat up than the nozzle. Here it's like we're already done with the nozzle, and the extruder is only like halfway to temperature, so it's really fast. And you can appreciate it if you if you have used some of these other other ones. So that's those are the two things. And but the other things are just the scalability. Like nobody builds in a way that can be scaled, modular, scalable. So yeah. those I think would be the the key key aspects, those three, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, would wall modules built with a 3D printer look the same as light frame wood? Well, if you have the plastic panel on the outside, you can print it and have texture, particular texture to it. You can color it, whatever you would. Uh, if you put, say, sawdust into it, it will lo look like wood. It will act actually have that texture and smell. Well, are there any like form changes? Like do we need the the studs still? Well yeah. Uh, in that case we, we would same? redesign it. No, you probably want to redesign some things. I mean a lot of the stuff that we build right now is for structural reasons. So a lot of it might look the same, but some other things you could probably change around. Or, I mean, you can do something like instead of using studs, you just have a partial infill solid, like a foam panel. Yeah, I mean, I, so it could I'm be only, different. Like, we, we don't, we won't be here when, like, Paul mentioned this, like, we won't be here when we do the 3D printer challenge. So, like, if we don't have the printer, we can't automate the wall module production. And, and you know, the, the time you do have the printer will be mostly gone. Well, that might apply right now. I mean, if the time, yeah, you can't develop something like that super quick unless you have super amount of resources. But uh, they'll be available that you can build at that point for, like, say, about 5K as opposed to 150K or 250K. So, I mean, that's the only benefit you can get. But someone has, someone has to build it, you know. Well, I would so say we could, it would still be around for building that part, but it would be, you know, need the focus of the apprenticeship. So I don't think we could be, like, building a house at the same time as working on a 3D printer part. Yeah, I would love to be part of the 3D printer that can, you know, shred plastic or melt plastic and then print uh, 
the wall panel. Yeah, so we will. Yeah. We are going to build that large printer while we're here. The question is how robust it's going to be. We're going to have a thing that works, more or less. And then is it production grade? You know, is everything worked out about it? That's that's the difference. So continue developing that until it's production grade. When you say large printer, you mean the you mean, you mean the heated printer? Yeah, it has to be heated because otherwise you can't print anything with it. Like not like these. So you gotta have to have a if we're gonna build close it, then chamber. What's the Hero X for? <laughs> well, it's it's about level of development as I was talking about this morning, from a concept to something that's partially detailed. Level of development, it's robustness. We can't, I mean, you, we're talking literally like cheapest, what, what, at our scale, uh, it's probably like a quarter million. I did not see any printer that's that large, so it's it's bigger and more ambitious than anything else. That's going to take time because things are scalable, but there's tricks to how, how much you can scale and what things you have to provide for. It's not like it's development. Like think about programming maybe. You're going to have to work out all the bugs, you know, like you build the first code. That's going to be our first cut, you know, version one, uh, when we build it. So it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, just many iterations. Like all the bugs have to be ironed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see this so, taking many apprenticeships to yeah. refine each design. Yeah. We would be lucky to get the first iteration done in this apprenticeship, which I have before it is. We can. We, and nobody even has the very small heated chamber. That's a big deal right there because the cheapest printers for that are like you know, about the $10,000 point, $10, point. I mean, that in itself, do a small one like you know, smaller than that size and it's $10,000. Um, so, yeah. I do but, see yeah. Well, well no. To, well, I was going to say to do both the Hero X and the, the large 3D printer, like, if we have a first iteration, we could release that as part of the base starter kit for Hero X and say, like, if you want to exactly. this challenge, you can fork this design. It's a first iteration. You know, this is our, we're like uh, leveling the playing field in some sense. Yes. And it will keep leveling it, you know, the, the next, well, actually, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, are we going to keep refining the 3D printer throughout Hero X? Does Hero X last for six months? Year, we six we, months we make it how long, however long we want to. Okay. What what we think is a reasonable reasonable time. So would it be reasonable to say that a good output of Hero X is with the wider community? We make a second iteration of the large scale three D printer that's capable of printing a wall panel from plastic. Yeah. Um, and then that's worth giving the you know two hundred fifty k prize to someone who can make like such a Yeah. Simple. We we have to define the specifications. Yeah. You'd okay. say you have to print like. And I can't hear anybody because there's no microphones on over there. Oh, um, yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, yeah, if you guys want to turn on your... Turn on the microphone there somewhere. Um, um, it's a continuum. It's like the assumptions there, I'm just throwing it out there, and I'm going to work hard, do what I can. But as I said, I have shed the cross already, right? That's that's my message here. Like, I'm not going to, I don't want to do it all. I can't do it all. It's going to be a community effort. It's going to be a collaborative effort. So we open ourselves to be vulnerable. We relate, release all that we have, and we seed many people to stand on our shoulders. Um, now, the timing is... Now, how long is it going to take to create a new civilization or a new principle? The open source economy, which, which I, I see as, as where companies are typically, as a general rule, collaborating on products by drawing from a common pool. It's a different, it's, it's like a different, it's like from Mars or something, some, from some extraterrestrial system, operating system. Maybe one exists out there somewhere because we can't see what's out there. Maybe we should find that. Um, but it's like so foreign that people start thinking, what, like what Katarina mentioned, people start thinking it's a law of nature that we compete like that, that patents, like patents, they're a law of nature. That's what, that's the critique that Yokai Benkler, he's one of these scholars on open source, uh, he says that people think patents are a law of nature. It's a complete human figment. It's a human fiction. 
in, it's invalidated by the human like the human thought process of that. We support it. The only thing that makes it alive is because everyone believes it's it's real. Yeah, it's it's uh, this is the matrix. Swallow a whole packet of red tablets. Come to Factory Farm. We'll heal you tomorrow. That will definitely get some recruits. <laughs> we'll, we'll put you in the tent while you lay down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but, so, um, let's see. So I think you all were talking about the tribute of Enterprise that I walked out earlier. So how do you, how do you get people, how do you sell that to people? How do you I mean, sell it to people? Obviously starting your own business is, is important, but then how... Can you lead people to... Most people are not entrepreneurs. Right. So you have to say, here's the products that are better, faster, cheaper, stronger kind of deal. So what is that? Huh? No, nothing. The house. Uh, we can get you a house. Lower cost, half the price of what you'll find anywhere else. That's enough. 30% of lower than anything else is enough if we, if we meet acceptance. But, but we're not selling houses right now. Right now? No one, no one can buy a house. Well, I well, mean... they can email a merchant. Will you sell a house if someone emailed you yeah. for it? Yeah, we, we're looking for a client. For a we want to build somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Plus that. land and the utility connection costs, which they would pay for. But, so we can Give sell me 50 like G's. one or two houses, yeah. but we can't sell 20 houses. Well, not until everyone yeah. finds out about it and a person says wow I got a house that's half the cost of anything else and it's good it that's marketing that's word of mouth and it's growth of the business I mean right now of course we don't have any traction so that's something that's developed over time and there's marketing there's assets like marketing like the videos or maybe like people play your game and then people say we make it known in the game that your game is marketing. Well, that's what like I'm saying. They like, can, well, you can buy I, this. If I create a funnel, yeah, there's n there's no there's no end to the funnel. It just we have a, a manufacturing we need to, bottleneck. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's until true. Until we are able until to we got get the distributive enterprise, but that's, until we get that. That's the thing. Like you have the <coughs> selling the business, which is like selling the products, and then you're trying to sell the movement as well. You know, getting people on board, getting them to contribute, getting them to, getting them to understand why this is important, and you know, taking them out away from that mindset that we were just talking about. Yeah, but I mean, that's why we're here is to develop it, and um, yeah, like the product, like pending simply optimization of what we have, just learning to build it, effective build time. I mean, we're still iron out some details like but those are not huge details like we don't have a design it's like we're just refining so what we have right now is the kind of stuff that builders sell all the time they have less refinement than we have and they sell it all the time so uh, we can't do it but we'd be just like any other builder which may be maybe good or maybe hard living I mean builders typically have a pretty good living they make good money um, we could do at least that, but I mean, we'd have to work on it full time. Our goal is a little different. It's like we're going to be so good that it doesn't take us all the time. We can do it part time, and we can bootstrap other cross subsidize effectively, cross subsidize other worthwhile activity. Um, yeah, um, that's a good point, and that's what I was thinking earlier today. Is if we had um, a page with a where you can add things to a cart and for example some of the things that uh, we've already made like the, the 3d printer and the CEV yeah. press then um, we'll get more I mean that'll well, yeah. increase revenue and so that's exactly what I'm saying that's that's a web page that's that's a funnel that's an asset that if we make it modular so once again I'm calling for modular assets that we put put into the stone soup to make an enterprise the, the enterprise stone soup um, so the nice website, good photo shoot, like videos of the house popping up and stuff like that. All of that. You can probably capture some of that during these next few months, right? Mm -hmm. But if we make those assets modular, then it's worth your time because you're helping yourself. We're going to feed you some other assets. So that's the, that's the value proposition for us as developers. We're shortening the development time for that each... I mean, that's what I'm, I'm like, I don't want to do this myself. I, I know how huge that is that it's not even funny, right? 
So that's why I'm laid back like a dead fly and <laughs> trying to get people to collaborate. I definitely, uh, I'm excited about it, but I know that, I mean, being in this for some time, I appreciate how much effort it is. You know, I've been through a lot of this stuff. So uh, I know that uh, the, the trick now is getting uh, a credible story out there and, and kind of like this trigger snowball effect that's going to happen pretty soon. I mean, we're close. We're very close. I mean, um, I'd like to. I'd like to think that we're going to double every every year from now on. That's. I think we can do that. Double what? Double every year. Double what? But what's the, you know, the KPI? Revenue. The corporate speakers? Double revenue, man. Double our double revenue. Double number of seat homes. Um, uh, well, no revenue. resources that come in. Sales, sales. So that means products, seed homes. Double as in our revenue. Say it's 200k this year, maybe 400k <coughs> next year. Uh, so that means in 10 years we're at a billion, right? Yeah, that's how exponential growth works. I think we're there. I'm the same myself, every one of us, all of us. We're, we're collaboratively developing that so we can spawn. Uh, as soon as we've got a working entity, that this thing's going to take off. I mean, kind of. I think it really needs to, to show one. It's a working model, and then that's how I. That's my mental model about it. That's how I see it. But I think the story has to change from, I mean, you want us to start businesses for ourselves using, you know, OSC model and technology so that when we create a common core of assets, we're creating it, you know, for ourselves, for the businesses that we want to start, as opposed to helping OSC with, with their business, with your business. Um, so when you say we want to double every year um, and, you know, reach a billion, is that total of, like, all of our sales from all companies that are OSC? I'd say, OSC? I'd say, yeah. I'd say it's uh, talking collectively like we, because it's not going to be me, right? It's not just this operation. It's the assumption here is that everyone can replicate it. So it could be people here or people who just uh, do it in the wild completely, just take our plans and run with it. Sure. Uh, so once once a really good, well-defined business is, like say we publish a lot on the enterprise manual, idea was to p publish an enterprise manual for the CD Eco home. That could be a, a huge thing. Right there, we can all of a sudden be like, a bunch of these get started all over the world. That's but that's possible. I think we need to actually have profit, profitable enterprises. Like, I feel like I'm not qualified to make an enterprise manual until I've created a business that is profitable using open source. We're not, but we can c contribute to it. The pieces that make it up because it's made up of little pieces that's the idea of modular breakdown so you have enough of those little pieces and then it actually starts to work it has to be a lot of those pieces there's a lot that goes to it like right now the last decade we just just did the prototype development yesterday we came into the word customer development it's clear that we need business development a lot of assets. So what I'm calling for, once again, what I started this meeting with was we have to throw a bunch of these little pebbles into the stone soup. Once it's at a certain point, it becomes really tasty and everyone can can eat from it. Yeah. I mean, you know the stone soup metaphor, right? You know what I'm referring to? No, but it reminds me of JoJo Stone Ocean. <laughs> I don't know that. It's probably some video game. No, what is, I don't know what you're talking about, but... I don't know what anybody's talking about. <laughs> Maybe we're all just talking to ourselves. But the fact is, whatever comes out of these gates, we have a higher chance of survival if we all work together. And that's the stone soup. So is it, like, for, like us, we're, we're here. We, yeah. You know, we've kind of committed ourselves to being a part of the OSC model and movement and, and business, but how do you get someone else on, like, is there some formal type of thing that they email you, like, are there certain yeah. things that people may want to contribute that you can kind of generalize and then, like, hey, we want research and development, so you study our yeah. designs and you contribute, or we need people that are, you know, going to be builders and are handy people and you come on the projects, it's like... It's everything, I mean... It's, it's everything I mean but as far as the scalability of it 
uh, I think we need people coming in in a serious way, which means at this point starting enterprise or buying the products. Like right. if we have the the house, then the supporters are all the people that buy it and fund the the further development. Right, and they're so we're wrapping that back into the enterprise. Right, they become members of the community collective. Yeah, and also people that say they want to join and they figure out some way with you to contribute. Could be all kinds of ways and that's that's called onboarding there. Uh, there's a get involved page on the wiki. I mean we only have so many things. Okay, buy our printers, take the apprenticeship, sub subscribe to the workshops, you know, come to our stuff. Um, and then whatever else uh, whatever any of us here create. You know, the the whole point is just that that gets a, that that's part of a feedback loop where you're building on something as opposed to it's just like random it's a time binding concept or economic time binding concept we're actually building we're contributing to that as opposed to just okay this is some random enterprise that i have and i'm not sharing it with anybody i am actually putting back resources that make everybody's life easier so that that's the theory the theory is by sharing openly the best knowledge like we got some of it some best knowledge here and we share that openly to make it easier for everybody uh, so that's that's the simple principle. Because if there was a lot of people that were doing that, man, think about it. Wouldn't that be pretty great? Like getting all these product designs available. Yeah, I mean, economy shifts to open source, to, to distributive, distributive. People just coming in to you know, Discord, like, hey, this is what I've done this month, and this is what I have for the next month, or like... Updates and well, yeah, but technically speaking, documented in a, in a, in an organized way, like the wiki, the development templates, that kind of stuff, where people can find your stuff, right? So there has to be some common understanding about where everything is, according to best practices. like entrepreneurs should we be trying to hire people is that is that the model we, we should have like form yeah I'll form for profit corporation hire people to manufacture or design open source hardware yeah I mean hire or train uh, folks require you to have a board of directors as well usually in this that was one of the reasons why that did my L did the LLC because I can just be a single member of the course. You know, we have to find or have people. The only trick to hiring people, of course, is that you're gonna have to have some revenue coming in right. <laughs> first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there's one thing at a time, uh, or you can get a load of money from an external source and try to see if you can make it before you burn out, like venture capital but here it's yeah the product so if we have that product yeah you can hire people because you're going to need people you need to manage your team to to build it for you. you you know once you learn it you your skill is better at okay let me get some people that that i can show how to do this to multiply my effort that's how you can scale automate you know, hire set up an organization that does that so you're you're sitting in your own personal open source panopticon mm -hmm. Yeah, but at this point, I guess the revenue model is teaching people and um, trying to get them to join the movement. Um, I think we have to think in terms of uh, uh, sales a little bit and mm -hmm. start thinking about how you increase the conversion rate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and that is true. Yeah, I, I feel like there are some things that we can do. Uh, some little things we can do. Yep. We've already talked about the website. Uh, I think uh, we should have an audio mixer on this table. We shouldn't ha have, you know, all these microphones. There should be one audio input, and that would do a lot for the audio quality and the quality of the video that we're putting out. Um, and just generally, yeah, putting out high quality videos, that, that would go a, a long mm -hmm. way. Yeah. All the, the finer marketing. Yeah. You gonna do it? 
Sure. I, <laughs> I've already been shopping for audio mixers. I, <laughs> we can. I I brought uh, what four or five microphones, high quality microphones. I, we can just. I just need the audio mixer and we can get the ball rolling. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Talking about marketing sales, we, we could use more people signing up for the workshops. It's like nobody's signing up, I'm not pushing. I'm, I'm too busy. I mean, man. Um, but so that's one. That's thing that's the thing that's right it's a pain point. Just put it out there. With our there's a workshop. You know, we got a whole load of events coming up, and there's I don't know. We've got like ten people signed up or something. Um, we could use twenty, thirty, forty. You know. Um, that's that's a big thing. I mean, our product is this edutainment or immersive experience, experience economy. We are in an experience economy, and uh, we could do a, a lot of effort to push that forward and market it. So it's marketing. Well, I think um, this goes back to scalability, right? Like, how yeah. how do we how do we financialize open source hardware in a scalable way? Because Airbnb can make money by charging. Um, people who you know charging some fee on people who stay, or, or mainly it's like a business by empowering other businesses. And I still think that like op open source has a problem here because we're giving it away for free. Yeah, but the same thing applies to empowering other businesses that could be our service that we're generating revenue for. So if you frame it that way, then that would be training more entrepreneurs to, with a proven model like a McDonald's cookie cutter thing. Here's how you build a house and make a living out of it, and actually do good things and be socially conscious. I think that's the service we're after at the end of the day, because we're really an education, education production organization, kind of hybrid. But that's that's the equivalent, isn't it, of the kind of service you're talking about? I think maybe so. So let's follow that train. Like, okay, if it, but so if the money. Is if the the profit is distributed, um, distributed enterprise means the agents that want to take it they can. It's like the creator controls their creation, kind of a thing. That's the merit. That's the kind of basic governance we have. Like, ideally, don't ask me to pay you. I'm giving you the knowledge to do it, empower you, and you can actually make more money. Because anytime somebody works for somebody else, they only get a part of their worth. That's how enterprise works. So I would like to see more entrepreneurs. Now some people, uh, that's a responsibility. Some, some people might want to say, nah, I'm just going to take less than I'm worth. I'm going to be an employee. And uh, I'm fine with that. A lot of people are fine with that. A lot of people love that. <laughs> Most of the world loves that right now. Well, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> they don't necessarily <laughs> love it, but they do it. Yeah. So they're ultimately responsible for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, because we can argue about that. Like, you know, people start business. Most businesses fail. Most yeah, because are failures. Yeah, because there's not not. And they don't they don't have the safety net to keep trying. Yeah. A lot of people just don't have the safety net. And they, that's why. So yeah, salary. but that's what, we're trying to create something like that, the open source safety net. I mean that's that's the idea here, and yeah, it is hard because of the way that the economy works. It's very competitive. It's still this uh, fight or flight thing. Mm -hmm. That's where we live. That's the world we live in, right? So what, what I'd like to see out of this is um, us actually starting an enterprise from here, right? With uh, OEC as our base. Yeah. Um, sure. And making the money, which will allow us to stay longer. Yeah, I mean, if we're actually yeah. selling houses and making the money, then mm -hmm. then we can buy food and st yeah. stick around, pay our energy bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we don't get those solar panels yet, if you don't have them yet, or yeah. if you don't have the big two we're aquaponic yeah. gardens or, <laughs> or three. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah, so so let's start the business. Let's start it. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What business? 
So where are we going to start? <laughs> you mean like we all wait a minute? Oh, share or, or we all create our own businesses and collaborate here to forward? Well, I was thinking. Well, to collaborate, you have to go to a common core. Hmm. You can't really create your own business. It has, or if if you're creating your own business, it has to feed a lot into the core. So we're actually collaborating because that's just our mission: collaborative design. Well, so how do you whatever you do make sure it's collaborative design collaborative open that's what I thought like you, I mean obviously you, everyone has their own interests but then it's yeah. it's like a like a star network like there's kind of a center point between a group of nodes and everyone else has their own individual node around yeah that yeah I was actually thinking that we'd all just start because who here has actually started the business? Who has the experience running business? Mm -hmm. So if we all work together on one business, yeah. we get the experience, I mean, get yeah. the customers, get the money coming in, and then we can all branch up once we, you know, once you have uh, the, uh, the experience and the, um, uh, what is it, and the finance, the capital to start somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So is that, yeah. so what happens, so timing wise, there's December 22nd, so when are we going to um, do it? Yeah. Right after? Sorry, Matt just said, can you repeat what I said? <laughs> <laughs> you Matt says, <laughs> repeat? Okay. Repeat what Ken said. <laughs> Ken, what Ken said, why don't we start a business here that we're actually all running so we can take some capital and share that and and start our own enterprises elsewhere. And get the experience. Right? Get the experience because a lot of us don't have experience in running a real business. A successful business. A successful or scalable business. Uh, something that's scaling. That's That's what Ken said. Yeah, we'll but see. Then that's the thing, like the the timing, like you were saying. I guess it's I guess it's good for a reality check, just to you know, you're here working right now, but then when mm -hmm. December comes around, like how how do you continue on? How do you maintain? Uh, uh, yeah. How do you maintain the um, momentum? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How do you maintain the momentum? Yeah. That you that's had? right. That's right. We're developing, so ideally the situation would be that the mom momentum has gotten so far that the startup phase is then easy. Like, okay, a month or a few months, and you're actually going in the field. Or maybe like we decide, hey, we got a few, actually a few house orders. We Out of the crash course, the builder crash course, we got a bunch of orders because people like it and say, ah, oh, this is nice. And then some people give us checks or something. Then we can work it. Mm -hmm. Have, have you, the first so you're working on press as well too right like how do you how do you get in front of maybe mass media to talk about this and just talk like you've already talked about your experiences there's other, other things around but more uh, recent development how do we talk about it to the media or how, how do we get in front of them to to talk about it you know does anyone have access to well I, I have access for example to a media PR guy from TED that they help us with launches. Now there's a little prerequisite to that for a launch. You also have to have a product. product yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Some minor details. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the point is, we we're you know we have um, I have good connections all over the place. The the thing is like product people who take it on so I think the biggest ingredient is people who are trained who, who now have the skills to take it on like say Wes you want to go out and you can join us you can actually have enough skill that you're at building the house taking that revenue from it stuff like that um, that's the idea the people the agents who are doing it because the I, and the development to get to that sufficient level of development that it can actually uh, that stone soup is actually bearing, bearing fruit. Yeah. So I guess that's the thing. People just want to be able to have the resources they need to sustain themselves. That that's it. And if 
and we talked about that before in the beginning. If, if building houses and having clients in the beginning is how we do it, then that's, that's fine. And then the development can continue, the research can continue on other products, and other people can continue developing their own enterprises further, you know, in a way where it's... But collaboratively, yeah. Right. So you're always feeding back, so... Where they're committed. Yeah. Instead of... And then I exchange, actually, yeah, at that point exchange happens, the contracts, the agreements, exchange of value for value. That's what we're talking about. So, so I think one of the unsolved issues here is um, like incentives to to individuals, right? Because communism kind of fails because. Um, it doesn't matter how much effort people, yeah. individuals, put forth. And so, one thing that's kind of I feel miss, I'm missing here is, and especially like, like okay, if we each create our own businesses, well, that's fine. Um, but, but if if we share the business, then maybe the incentive structures aren't there for us to perform our best work. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of talking theoretically about okay, say that we start the business, like we have to say okay, what we got to uh, reify it with more detail like okay when is it so we're going to be very busy till end of september like so are we going to work on starting that and what are we going to have at that time so we have to like really reify it with more details but the incentive structure has to be there like the way i understand the incentive structure right now is that we're we're collaborating on an enterprise that's going to be really good so we're motivated that way but how much incentive does that provide like, does that provide enough incentive to you or to everybody here? I mean, to me, uh, absolutely. Like, all these things are getting further evolved. So I know, like, for OSC, we can tap this. I want to build a village, like a functional community that's like a university campus with everything from research and development to production to nature to agriculture and all of that. That's incentive for me. So someone has to, I think, uh, someone has to understand this more holistic incentive structure. Or otherwise, we have to get into specific agreements like, well, you guys agreed to come here to co-develop, so supposedly you found some incentive there to that it, you say, oh, that's worth it, I'm going to invest in it. It's an investment of your time and energy to de develop something, just like for me. It's an investment of my time to develop what I think is moving forward, all the technology that I can use by all means, I want to use it but also anyone else can use it. So I feel that's a it's a fair incentive. It's an incentive that can attract many people because many people want that product. Um, Having a cloister of people in a, you know, in a particular area and, and they, they're all more or less dedicated to the same causes would, would be something that I would want to work toward myself personally. Um, yeah. I mean, that's like, you, you feed yourself, you have to come up with ways to do business outside of that but you have the land and the space to to do that not just try to go back home and work from where you are and you're far away so it's you know it, it just gets more complex after that yeah 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 uh for me it's like whatever we do has to generate like i, I want to see it where we're so productive that we can pretty much snap up a new piece of land. I, I mentioned the thousand acre facilities, like whether it's in a desert or good area. I mean, that's that's where that's that's my where my eyes are. It's like you're building a village somewhere. You're building all that infrastructure, and then people will will come. Um, Offering people a, a newer way of life. Of yeah. Life without the, like yeah. obviously on jobbing and yeah. more leisure, but also the increased responsibility. Of having to provide for each other in the community because that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, with I, I look at it as like the metaphor that people understand is you get trained like in college, but out of this college tuition, you also get land, resources, the whole capital infrastructure, but you have to get trained to use it. That's the thing, because otherwise that infrastructure is useless if you don't know how to use it. So the the new college for me is going to be like one one I wish I could take is yeah something like that where you plug yourself into a place that uh, can allow you self-determination like land security like land rights and then the whole infrastructure for thriving that, that's kind of the model I have so what we're building here like I want to see that happen because basically now we're, we're plucking people out of their jobs oh, yeah. and uh, giving them meaning because 
that that's that's the value proposition like convert the world to to a world of meaning not people just trying to survive and uh, so I like to be the largest unemployer in the world it's my personal ambition no I think that's a valuable thing I I, I became unemployed like you know unjobbed kind of deal uh, that's a tall order for people who are just trying to make it through but um, and they see all the problems mainly rather than the solutions just like how am I gonna money first of all how am I gonna eat yeah. how am I gonna do x y and z but yeah you're not familiar with, but that can if you can package it up and explain to people how it works and, and show them something then you know it, it would be doable then mm -hmm. Matt, do you have any feedback? As a psychologist, he said he can't hear. <laughs> but Matt, can you hear us? <laughs> hear me? Or? <laughs> so what's, going, what's going on there? Uh, Matt can't hear me. He's not listening. I can I can hear you, Marchand, but I can't hear others. Uh, it, it, this is the this is far worse for me for me at least than uh, than Jitsu was. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but are all the people turned on? I'm not. Um, nope. Yeah, they, oh, they're on mute. So on my end, there's like a, there's like it constantly pauses in between everyone speaking, and it's just, it's bizarre. But uh, but repeat what, what you thought I might have uh, feedback on. No, I'm just asking if you have feedback on the ruminations that you're hearing here. Ruminations of. Yeah, we're we're kind of exploring territory. We're like uh, I would hope the goal would be that <clears throat> we create the stone soup of assets that are started to whatever whatever however far they get. I mean, we always want to think that we're impatient and uh, anything that can become a product should and you know we can take it to market. But I mean, it takes some building time. Uh, whatever progress is documented and time bound, then that's progress. That's good. And you, we come back to it whether here or elsewhere and it's that much closer to, to reality to, to a sustainable model mm -hmm. um, yes. so we're kind of talking about a lot of stuff here but I mean it boils down to revenue models like what are they do we have the product and so forth uh, in terms of yeah <laughs> Go ahead. And I, I, yeah and I, well, I've been thinking about um, there's this uh, it's a local nonprofit is, uh, trying to. Um, they, they've been partnering with Cornell, trying to identify like uh, affordable housing options, or like their project is is making land accessible um, to uh, to people in this case, particularly uh, BIPOC farmers, um, uh, who so they have a small parcel of land they can farm, uh, and also build a, a small affordable home on that land, and then the farmers could, could they live in kind of a community of kind of homes like this on kind of, you know, uh, connecting parcels. And so I, I feel like if we find someone who's like that, like an organization who's already trying to kind of, wants to be building multiple homes and and really is focused on affordability, is, would be willing to think outside the box, if we could just kind of pick up some momentum with those sorts of things, or even, you know, Habitat for Humanity, uh, but, uh, but they, they also might have more kind of constraints than like this other organization. Um, but I just like the idea of partnering with them to kind of continue honing and refining our methods to build momentum, to have product, you know, have, you know, examples that we can point to. Um, and I just think that would help. I, I don't know if that's speaking exactly to, to, to the question, but, um, uh, but I, I, I certainly see value in, in having, like for me, my biggest, question you know constantly comes back to am i going to be able to you know do this by myself you know i mean you know when when i go back home after the september build um you know uh, i know i won't be by myself and that you guys will still be uh, around virtually but uh, but yeah but but if we can really make it so that people can do this themselves i think that that's huge in terms of enabling different revenue kind of models yeah at this point it's getting the skill sets 
developing the capacity. And then yeah. the uh, thing that's interesting to me about organization, so the incentive structures for why does a certain organization partner with us? What do we give them? What do they give us? Are we simply getting a sale of a house at the 100K price point? Or is it something different? Are they providing land, for example, so that that's a lower cost thing? I mean, what is that? So we, I think part of the key is this gets into marketing now and business development sides. But what exactly is that instruct, incentive structure and like the dynamics, the, the strategy behind that? That's we got something they want. We want something they have. Like identifying that, that's that's kind of like either the business the development thing. 100K or it's some kind of mix of value that could be money and something else. Yeah, right now it could be they have a lot. They have a bunch of people that we can go out there and it's fast. Maybe, I mean, there's different revenue models. One could be the workshop model, which I don't think is that scalable because you can only run so many of them. But there could be a revenue model where we as skilled entrepreneurs we can take 24 people anywhere, like off this, literally off the street, or uh, say there's a captive audience somewhere. It could be training, you know, uh, whatever that is. Um, how do we make it work? Like creating viable scenarios where we can really take off with what we what we do. Once again, that builds upon the core, which we don't haven't refined to the point that we need yet. That we're working on it. So. It's not, it's not like hopeless or anything like that. It's this is like, uh, I'm really asking this in the framework of how are we going to take over the world with this, really, so uh, or how fast. But uh, right now we we're not there yet, obviously, and uh, but as we go forward, we we just open source that so anyone has access. So we're we're literally like leveling the the field for everybody, right? Yeah. And one thing I, I was the first free enterprise, which doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about this earlier today. I was on a I was on a call actually with Habitat for Humanity today because yeah. they're building a, a home here, and, and the part of me wanted to bring it up, but then I was but I didn't really know like what what we would be proposing. You know, like what is the relationship? Uh, I, I think you know I, they're probably paying like two hundred grand for you know a house that. Uh, you know, a three-bedroom house that's probably comparable in size to what we're talking about. And so I'm sure they'd love that. But so, yeah, so is it just that we're building with them? Um, uh, I, I, one thing is to the extent that having more trained builders can serve us in being able to then kind of do these swarm builds, that could be one kind of incentive for partnering, particularly with um, like have that for Manny or this other group that's really trying to serve underprivileged groups. Like you know, I could see like for example if we're talking about farmers who whose kind of work is kind of um, kind of tied to weather and, and cyclical. You know if if these builds really are kind of part time things. Like I could see you know training you know them to help build their own home and then having kind of a group of people that are available that could be a real benefit to us in our ability to to you know build homes that kind of quickly and efficiently so maybe that's worthwhile in of itself plus there's some additional kind of, kind of revenue that we generate in the process I don't know. yeah it, it comes down to I guess it may be even like customer prototyping or like how do you vet that out what are the actual what is that relationship that works like we need to find out okay what do they need what do we have and so forth like all of that and then if it's okay, so say they do have say 200k, and we can do it at 100k, then the math is very simple, right? And then if that's the case, uh, what's standing in the way of that? Then start looking at those reasons and and seeing if that's something that's structural or that's like, oh, they just operate that way. We can't really break through that their operating model. Uh, it might be that. I don't know, like maybe there's bank loans involved and there's certain stipulations. So it's all about track, you know, it's really assessing that situation once again for the product, uh, for the product sale or for the, that, the relationship to work.
that's that's all you know we're like talking about this like not knowing we're kind of like fumbling in the dark now there's probably people that could be here that are listening to this like say we post this on you on youtube which we are and then somebody feeds back hey uh, i actually understand this here's what's going on and here's how you you do this uh, which is how i feel about the meeting on tuesday with the people in kansas city i felt like okay i understand this this is how it works here's how you can get in um so uh, the person i met jesse they actually want to visit monday so he wants to come down monday to check us out and um see what we where we go from there uh, from umkc so yeah yeah that kind of thing i that's the part i i think is really worth open sourcing for everybody to to level the playing field so yeah i i think uh one thing that was brought up yesterday regarding doing like kind of like interviews with potential customers and stuff i think i think that'd be great like like we could put together some list of questions um and and, and there's a particular way to ask good questions and, and you know uh, i can help with that i'm sure brian uh has experience with that and and we could develop kind of this list and then all of us could kind of go out and just talk to people i'd love to talk to the habitat people here just to get a sense for you know sure would they be interested what would that what you know i mean you know this other group i think that would be really fruitful for us yeah i agree I'm, I'm looking up the so in an enterprise template that we do have like so how do you track this and keep keep order or actually keep building upon this information so um in an enterprise template so we have one set up for the cd eco home um let's see can i share my screen on this so you can take a look at it yeah screen share sure uh screen share tells me to go live yeah sure can you can you see it in this one yeah um so that one you guys can see it mm -hmm. okay so this is the development of the of the product below that is development of the enterprise so uh, I'd like to see if we can u start using this or whatever's missing there I mean there may be some bad things that don't fit or like some more relevant things so what is our unique value proposition for a specific thing we want to do product strategy cost structure business plan critical path economic benefit and then there's production, planning, operations manual, training and management, facility design, supply chain development, actual production and quality control, then the marketing is product assets, marketing strategy, marketing plan, product web page, then sales and support. So what's our sales strategy? How do we support customers? How do we ship? Open source everything store. I like to put that one in. That's like the idea of um, collaborative developed products that people just feed into according to an infrastructure like this here's the well first you have to start with a product um, you know the business needs a product typically uh, we develop that and then also continue on to the enterprise level for that the idea there is like a wiki page you've got the product you've got production engineering like 3d printed here's parts here's everything uh, where imagine like having an eBay store or like an Amazon store but you got products that are open source collaboratively developed and a lot of people can sell that that's that's the kind of idea of everything open source everything store I'm not sure how exactly it fits in this template but uh, I threw it in there improvement is marketing and sales data let's analyze that let's track it customer feedback continuing improvement so uh, any product has to get better or it kind of fades out perhaps um, and then enterprise future work so those are some of the assets for for enterprise uh, but things like like the website that has um, product website where's that product web page yeah I mean that's something that could be completely modular embedded even on a wiki you know we set up our people we train them do as simple as even a, wi a well formatted wiki page this is your storefront with a buy button you know, that's kind of how, how I would see this modular infrastructure for different products happening. Uh, I think that's something we can probably get people around, but uh, given that 
hardware takes tons of development we need some open products which of which there are very few maybe like the 3d printer would qualify maybe the brick press the house I mean those are <laughs> solid like very far and developed along the product release line uh, but yeah so if we're developing like say Matt you're you're getting the feedback so it's like really where where is that at is that somewhere in uh, enterprise template well I think by talking to people you come up with a clear unique value proposition like they want this and we uniquely satisfy it you know that can inform our product strategy so maybe we start uh, by the feedback we start developing these points um, so as you see there like there's a bit of development on each each of those like unique value proposition and so forth for the house and everything else kind of recorded some of it and that, that of course gets updated with any new insights but product assets what do we have Got a bunch of there's no links here so there's nothing there <laughs> but you know what we need to, to communicate the asset, the product, things like that. Um, something like a click funnel site or whatever, like once we have the products, like we can do that for 3D printers and brick presses right now. We can scale up the brick production, like we can build probably a couple a week. I mean, I, we can, for the big machines, we can scale up, like the big workshop based machines, tractor, brick press, 3D printers, we can scale that up to to either a few or dozens per week, not not even scale. We can do that right now. Um, like my experience with it is, that I can do about four printers. That was the tested printers. So probably have more like eight or twelve kits per day. It's not bad. When you get the production line going on that, it's it's good. So it's possible right now. I can't tell if someone else is talking. Is someone else talking, Merchant? No, we've got okay. deep silence. <laughs> but then uh, I just wanted to offer, I, I'd like to um, start, like, uh, maybe I'll just add it to right there where we're looking at under the enterprise template. I'll just, uh, you know, add, like, number seven or something. Or well, how about, make well, for that, you'd have to, that's a template. So if I added that, that's a template uh, okay. that's embedded. So let's do this. Tell you what, if you look at my screen, so... Yeah. So we're all going to do the CDK Home Enterprise Development, maybe? Uh, well, if we want to start one, so say product. So we've got product. Oh, this product ecology. So product one. For product one, we can set up a development template by doing uh, subst um, enterprise. It's called enterprise. And then product one. So here we just seeded a first product development template. Uh, that's that's how we can do it. Now you can, uh, if you want to edit that that existing template, yeah, you go ahead. That's on a wiki. You can go ahead as well if you want to add. You think there's like a critical item missing, and then we can pull that back into the overall template if um, that seems fitting. What item were you thinking? So you're looking at, uh, yeah. I mean, after all, customer prototyping. Maybe we should have that as. So you're thinking item number after six, product, um, customer prototyping, because the product need, needs customers. It's more like the marketing part almost, right? Well, uh, and and since the since 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 the the customer and their needs in many ways should be driving the product yeah. design itself. You kind of mm -hmm. want it earlier in the process. So yeah, um, at the product stage, like maybe that's customer prototyping yeah. is item number it, well. Yes, it, even maybe number one. Maybe number one because it's like you don't know what unique value proposition is until you talk to some people, really. Right. Well, we can we can do that. We can go. Um, so under product, we can add this extra line that says not unique value proposition, but customer prototyping. 
and so that would be seat home too. Customer prototyping. And that's got a zero, so that should add a uh, what's the number? Of, oh yeah, scope row. That would be. Oh wait, I did that. So let's make that zero, and put it before the one. Um, if we don't mess that up, there I think we're at. Uh, I think right there. Scope row. Oh, what what I do there? Oh, I think I deleted this from the unique value proposition. So we got our customer prototyping there. Item number zero, so maybe get rid of the space here and there. We did it. We did it, people. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, well, I was hoping that these sessions might be where we actually, so you know, we kind of bounced the idea around quite a bit. Why are we here? We advance this idea. Now, maybe we can actually, yeah, I mean, use these sessions. What do you guys think about using these sessions? We're actually creating some of these these um, these items. So maybe it's um, yeah, uh, adding to these assets so it fits. Like I think about immediately about marketing because we've got events that are coming up and and we need more people. Uh, product assets, developing. I mean, that's that's things like video. We've got a little bit of that. I mean, there's, there could be all kinds of assets. It could be simple email or like social media posts or whatever. Um, but all that kind of stuff should be pre prepared for us, like so that we, when we're running that enterprise, it's like we've got that. Someone th thought about the words to use. How do you how do you do it and stuff like that. Um, marketing plan. I mean, it's empty right now. Uh, <laughs> things like that. Uh, product web page is kind of empty. We'd like to have a yeah. probably a dedicated website would be good. Do you think we could earn money? Like just try and we just try and earn the money? Well, from um, people sign up for the workshops, that's revenue. No, I mean like can we try and earn money? Unfortunately, that's not what your agreement said. <laughs> in our agreement I said explicitly if we make any money we got to cover costs because uh, so let's talk about that so yeah. uh, we've got so right now the the budget is like in a budget if we do all the things we said it's like 450k uh, out of which the 100k was gonna go for the the incentive challenge and that came from a 200k loan we've got like a hundred K about 105k revenue right now, but we got to cover all these costs if we're going to do it. So for that reason, I I put very explicitly it like if we end up building stuff here, uh, goes to cover costs because we've got hopefully we're not broke by the end of the year, is the thing. We've got those costs to cover. If that does happen, um, we've got some savings in the form of Bitcoin, like whatever that. But that's like that's like oh, whatever it can do. Whatever it can do. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, but we'll have to. I mean, I'm looking at it. Look, people, we got to get customers. We got to develop this thing, and we need customers at the end of the day. You know, uh, there's no question about. It. Like, we can, I can sweat. Like, I kind of think about it this way. Like, let's burn through all that. Like, you know, we've got. Um, like in the Bitcoin right now, it's like 200k, right? So it's like yeah. seven. <laughs> seven. Seven. <laughs> Maybe just we gotta sell it. right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll go to uh, some millions later, but maybe not right now. Timing might be bad. But I'm really focused on let's use the resources, let's burn it. We're uh, we've got a, you know, we've got a certain flow. Let's keep the momentum up. Keep talking to people like BNIM, and uh, the people we met in Kansas City. 
we we gotta just keep. I mean, yeah, the revenue has to come, and and the only way you do it is by effective production. It's it's very simple. You got a product, you have effective production. That's it. If one of us develops it, we all have it. That's the beauty. We're not worried about market size here. Everything we're selecting is by design large, so that allows us to collaborate. We're kind of being safe by it and focus focusing on like essential needs that we're meeting so we're, you know we're very close to real economics we're not like creating some funny money product or whatever some fake stuff like fake economy you know like the financialization stuff we're working on real things so it's very tangible and can meet our needs so we got to get go through it go through that diligence and make it happen that's the idea. Now, as far as fi financial incentives for that, like, what do you got to gain from that if OSC gets that money? Well, maybe we'll live another year. <laughs> That's what you'll get. And, we'll, and we're, we're the, as, uh, as small as we are, we are the cutting edge in these techniques, so we should live. I think it's a good idea if we do live. But, of course, we'll live. I mean, we can live on shoestring budgets here because we've got land. And if I had to, I'll just plant some sweet potatoes and eat my nuts. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> do what you gotta do to make sure that it works. Well, that's what I've done. Yeah, that's and that's great. Um, so, which allows me to be not for sale, which is great. You've looked into uh, Kansas City as far as like nonprofits and maybe uh, different contracts that would be available for um, like improvement for like I homeless and well other. Like I, I think I saw the interview. On YouTube. Which one? Um, oh, the one with the ladies. Yeah, the, that was one of many organizations. I don't think that particularly went forward m anywhere. Yeah. Um, like you, I think you heard some of the blocks there, but. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, but there is the meeting we had on Tuesday is was extremely ripe with all kinds of connections, and it seems like, as I mentioned before, it's like we've got okay, there's vets connections affordable housing, mayors, cutting edge research center, SBRS DTR grants, all of that, the university creating apprenticeships, job training programs, whereas the job training, like the only caveat on that is job training for the new economy, like I don't want to be producing more like people that go into this economy, so if we're a job training, it's build brick presses, build printers, build CD homes, don't go back into the competitive economy working for some proprietary company <laughs> or peddling proprietary products. Let's cr start creating the new ones. So that's only caveat for job training, which then we say, okay, people from Kansas City, okay, are vets, is that part of your mission? Can that work there? I think it can, because, you know, take the aquaponic greenhouse or the house, I, we can start a training program for vets. I'd like to pursue that discussion on Monday when Jesse comes here, because he, he is a veteran himself, he's the business developer, he is the director of research for that, it's called the Center for um, Institute, Missouri Institute for Defense and Energy. Well, I visited with Ted Brenniger at Fox Hill Homes, whose target is veterans. Yeah. Um, and he said that, that there's programs available. Yeah. Where veteran, where you could help veterans, and then they would would pay for veteran training, and then the veterans. Um, his goal was to to onboard veterans that have a uh, a check that they get, so that they have their own means of, of survival. I looked into that, and we'd have to sign up for that program. So that means filling out some paperwork. That discussion came from a vet that contacted me saying, "Hey, I want to go for the summer." there's this program I can get money if you've got the certification we don't mm -hmm. that's the thing if we had that then we got money coming in by the federal government paying for veterans that's mm -hmm. one one of many things that we could do what's it's required to do that to get the certification there's curriculum you have to show this is the curriculum and everything else and a bunch of paperwork you've got that we, we got to fill out the paperwork uh, I don't know how long that process takes. So ideally, we would find it's a person. <laughs> we find a person who's. You said okay, so I think you answered it. Can he help us do that? What is? I don't want to go into this blindly. Like mm -hmm. let's just learn from somebody who's done it, mm -hmm. and coach I us on it. I don't know that he so has completed the process himself. Right. So, 
he he worked for the Air Force as a counselor. Right. So he's got the inside. He's counseling veterans. Yeah, and there's centers. What I found there's a lot of centers at bases where they train the veterans for for future employment, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'd be a little bit out of their stuff because we're not going to put people in normal jobs. Right. We're going to unjob them. But I think a lot of entre entrepreneurial vets are out there. I think a lot of them, you know, they've seen some terror in their life there in war zones and stuff. So a lot, I found a lot of them are pretty, pretty open to innovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had a few here that were of that nature. Yeah. Uh, and they're pretty good. They they got hands-on skills. They, they they're survivors. Yeah. So it's about getting specific. Yeah, this is just one one of many things we can do. Uh, so anyone watching this, help us get that certification so we can take veteran money to train veterans. So that yeah, that's part of the kind of stuff. The thread that's going through with Brian. Uh, and UMKC, it's like you yeah, gotta set up a formal, set up a formal apprenticeship program. What exactly does that take? Um, so we just, someone has to do that. Like, I'm not gonna do that right now. Maybe if we find there's a strong case for that later. Like, if I, if I could see, okay, we've got tons, like hundreds of veterans that actually are eligible and interested. And I think a lot of them would be. Uh, but if we've got dozens or hundreds of them, yeah, I mean, let's spend a few days working this out. So it's a low risk investment of your time. That that could if we were pretty sure that works if we know it works let's just do it okay there's a, there's a enterprise branch of OSC right there mm -hmm. could accept full time staff and develop a program around that don't mind that let's get some revenue from that snap up another parcel keep growing replicate that to other facilities if you guys are around let's do the same thing that's that's the collaborative development I'm talking about we share that stuff. It almost comes down to the same category as like grant writing and grant research. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that's a full-time job, and and there's a uh, the system is is designed to protect itself. So uh, the thing about I looked into that, and there's a pretty foul play over there, and that is uh, there's no such thing as it's called unethical to be an on on contingency grant writer. Do you understand that? On contingency grant writer meaning you get paid when you succeed. <laughs> in other words, that's called unethical in, in the world of fundraising. Uh, but I think that's really foul. I pointed this out to some friends at TED, and they said, "Yeah, that's actually pretty." They never noticed it. Uh, I talked to some older people there. But the idea is, you can make more money only if you have money. That's that's a rigged game, right? Mm -hmm. So the the obvious thing is okay you get paid when you succeed as a grant writer you get a cut of that but poor organizations that don't have money they should still be able to 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 be in a game but it's rigged in the United States at least I'm not sure how it is in other countries it's probably the same mm -hmm. um, but in this country that doesn't work for for people without capital so in other words the nonprofit sector is enriching itself and perhaps drifting from mission because it's not letting the you know, capitalist people rise up to capital. I know that that deal. That's why I was never really interested in all these like this this grant writing stuff. But uh, like if the SBR, that might be different. Like may, maybe it's a little different. That's a, it's a very specific thing. SBR, STTR. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works. But I could be hopeful about that. There might be some good stuff. I mean, you know, take the brick press. Bam get that to production or whatever. There's actually, the, uh, Jesse knows the guy at, in the military that actually does the brick press program where they do reconstruction with brick presses. I mean, that's clear. Okay, just connect me to, connect us. And they make a big purchase over order of brick press. Um, I talked to a guy that has used brick presses in the Honduras, used the manual ones. Mm -hmm. And it, he said that when we get to the to manufacture the brick press and, and maybe we experiment with doing brick, bricks. He wants to come and, and see it. Which one? <coughs> the our our brick press. Our brick press. He or lives here. He's Mennonite, and yeah, they have mission work that they do. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, we're building one, and uh, it's November. 
Oh, totally. Build that. Or I, not not only then, we're planning to build one in a week or two, a couple of weeks right after the the, the seed home gets done. We're going to build that so we can build a low cost workshop. So if all of us have that access, yeah, it's low cost building. But I thought that, that might be a market is if that was successful in one place in the say in the Honduras, then maybe the Mennonite organization would oh purchase, yeah, that's right. Would purchase them and put them in different yeah you know, Nicaragua and yep and Belize and and wherever you know because they have large communities and they yep. they're a nonprofit trying to help people. So yep. No, yeah, all, all of these things are potential. Um, yeah, breakfast, I mean, that's, I mean, we've got something, like, if someone, someone wants to jump on and just start producing and marketing, I mean, that's, I think that would be very successful right now. Like, maybe Ken, you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just uh, about certification as well. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be helpful for international people mm -hmm. they can get visas or oh, for instance in my case I could get a visa uh, yeah what is it work exchange yeah like, because now I'm on a on this business tourist visa mm-hmm so yeah, work visas, capacity grant that, that would open us up to more people. That would definitely be another item. A work visa? Yeah. Is capacity to grant work like visas. So that you have to have a special status um, we don't have that status. We have tax exempt status. We do qualify as a as a tax exempt research organization. We're that like that's actually STTR requires that we qualify for that um, by the definition in the book. So, yeah. So to wrap up here, so uh, kind of wrapping up here, um, what are our conclusions from this fine day? What do we so what do we want to do with the enterprise sessions? Uh, I was hoping that we actually get down and generate assets that are going to be important for everyone in the future. Um, that's a worthwhile thing to do. So you know we're. The goal of the sessions was to say, okay, this is how it works. For, during the summer of extreme design build, the idea there was to really go into the nitty gritty. Like we, we have, we're constantly evolving the information. I mean, there is some business planning information, like product strategy, cost. I mean, cost structure is the critical one. It's like, what is your price point? Because this is how much it costs you. That's going to determine what you can sell for and how much money you make. If you get that one wrong, you're going to go out of business. So, so maybe you can have a bill of materials that's, yeah. that's linked to a spreadsheet. To, to yeah, we have a not a collated bill of materials, but all the things we purchased are in a big spreadsheet. But yeah, that's like so part of it is training ourselves to understand those numbers. Actually, I don't have an exact answer for I have an answer for January wood prices, and actually I think they're coming down to pretty much a January level. So this is when we bought uh, a lot of the wood, and and right now, actually I looked at the numbers. Right now, what we bought, what we bung, is called um, um, it's forty three thousand dollars what we bought. So it's actually under budget, like we were looking at 50, so we're, we're still within budget, uh, under budget. So, and maybe it's, uh, at current prices it might be like actually 50. I'm not, I didn't crunch the numbers completely, but that's, that's the enterprise side here. This is the kind of stuff we want to generate to make it easy for anybody to understand these numbers, understand how you can capture value in this entire value chain. Does that allow us to simply say like, you know, Josh, um, we're wrapping up here. Can I call you back? Yep. Details on those numbers are critical. Like, for example, there's Josh, Josh and Caleb who came to the party. Okay, so now we've got the full designs and everything. And just hire them to do it and pay them X dollars for, okay, give me all the panels. Right, and then you could possibly sell them. So you can be hiring people, and even could be like a total job 
job creator, unjob creator here. We're just farming out all these kits, and then we have to make sure we have the quality control. Make sure you have the, those protocols that when they give that to you, you're, you're getting product that works that you don't have to fix, right? I think that that's if you think about managing a certain product, the kit could be a definite big part. Maybe we take that kit and we actually build with it, but we get some additional people to prepare it for us, or we do it in our own workshop. But the infrastructure required is not too intensive. Like somebody can just do it and then stash it and bring it on a trailer. You know? uh, so there's all kinds of ways, but you got to understand your cost structure, what that allows in terms of a, the kind of business plan uh, and product strategy that you have. Um, so there's on a product strategy. I mean, just take a look at all. I mean, I wrote a bunch of stuff on that. Um, all kinds of stuff. I kind of like write the latest thought. Then maybe next month I had another. So I kept kept writing it down with a lot of uh, latest on top. Um, one of the ideas was uh, like a training package or a support package where we give you the kit and you give us a service fee and we, we coach you through the entire bill. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. Even the industry standards, like like what we were talking about, just the random things like the screw every foot and, um, you know, tolerances and all that stuff that people might want to yeah. have knowledge and awareness of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think right now the the real weak point is uh, uh, we gotta just get finished with this thing, take the photo shoot. That's like where we can say, hey people, this is what it looks like now. Because with the CD Go Home One, yeah, okay, that's that's like teaser, because we're not gonna build that exact product. And now we've got this, and once we have that, uh, the quicker we get that, the more signups and interest. That's that's when I think the it's gonna start. We're gonna start picking up. Where we're gonna be like, okay, okay, tell me more, tell me more and people visiting this and stuff like that. Um, that's going to be our tour model home. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you guys think? So should we spend the times in the evenings actually developing assets around that? And it could be uh, when it's the CD go home it's like okay building is one but very closely related it's okay we're out sort of like exploring the options like the thing the thing i think is useful with the product strategy it's like okay there's we're just all out we're in a shop i mean that's that's hard that, that's like the hardest most intense you go out or you know going out to the field and finding customers that's like the big thing turnkey build that's like the most ambitious but before that there's kits or if we do that, then we focus on actually training people so that as soon as possible, I train my foreman to do that for me so I'm not going out there. And then I'm using my skills of having more insight, maybe training more people to do it. So there's all kinds of ways we can go about it. And it's about getting very specific, getting very specific on what, what a particular work, workable path could be. That's, that's the kind of business development um, that's actual valuable stuff. I mean, there's plain marketing stuff, um, marketing strategies and all that, but like the product, around the product strategy, there's so much diversity and possibility there that I think it's worthwhile to explore all the options and actually do the due diligence on them. Like, what is the comparison of industry standards exactly? You know, what can we charge? How long do we need to build? You know, what's the maximum allowed time for to make our business model work? Do we focus on automation? Like right now, maybe the thing is, oh man, let's just get to that 3D printing printer, the panel printer, because that's like the real, then it's like, okay, now we're set. So um, look at the timeline, like the, the house is you know, almost kitted out, like it has the modules and everything. Mm -hmm. Then maybe another week or two. I'd like to see, stand up. yeah, yeah, like a week. Uh, I'd like to, see if we can possibly do that. I was hoping initially like 14 days to the build, but we're doing a lot of learning in the process. So, and we're spending a lot of time on other things, kind of refining things. Right. So, but yeah, ideally, um, Last week in, a in a seven, like next seven days, we can, um, I think I feel the block is like, 
having all the instructions, they're going quite slow by uh, getting all the accurate CAD worked out. Uh, it's, it's a little slower um, than I thought it would go. But yeah, we're learning. It's I mean, we got to do this. This you know, the learnings are okay. It takes some time. This is data. It's like okay, it takes so much to train people to understand it inside out. And we're still in the development, so we're doing both development and learning at the same time, which makes it longer. But um, the goal is to finish as fast as we can right now, so we can say okay, this product. That's that's the that's where we're at. And we can also, I mean, I think this, these sessions can add a lot. It's like, okay, let's explore different avenues. Like, maybe we push the RAM dirt 3D printed forms or whatever. Um, not directly related to what we're doing right now. It may be a little later, but maybe we say, ah, maybe we explore that. Or something. But something as close to the, the product as po possible so that it's definitely like any of the assets that are definitely we're going to use, we should be working on that and make it, making it transparent and developing it, putting some energy into it. Can I? Is there someone talking? Yeah. <laughs> I can't talk. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, can I, I don't know if it's too late uh, this evening to mention this, but I have an idea just thinking about the sort of uh, psychological side. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if um, one of the things we need to do is to, um, uh, I, we need a way for people to experience this general process firsthand in person in a small amount of time. I'm wondering if, if we could create like um, like a, a studio. You know, I feel like a lot of people nowadays, you know, they're working at home and so they create the studio out, out back that doesn't have really any, any appliances, you know, just has maybe a place for an extension cord to go through and some lighting or something. Mm -hmm. Something very basic. Yeah. Could we just, if we like made like I'm picturing, you know, like inviting, you know, half that folks out, and you know, having our, you know, the panels, the, the already the wall modules already set up, and just being like, look, here, help us finish this wall module, so you get that experience. And now, in the next couple hours, we're just going to put this thing together, and, and there, like this is, you know, and this is how it would be different in, in the house with the appliances. But like, would something like that be as easy as I'm thinking it would be? And, I think it would be as easy as you're thinking it, because the modules, once you have them. Uh, they go up fast. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. That's a good idea. Katrina was mentioning about smaller units. Yeah, I mean, this is you're, you're referring to some things along the experience economy line. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's... Uh, what do you see as the, the actual outcome of that? Like, what's the goal of that? Is that marketing? Like, market these things? Or, or is this <laughs> actually where you're building them for, for, for <laughs> kidding or sales? Yeah, I mean, two things. Uh, you know, most people don't have you know a, a spare lot on hand to build a house to test it out. But you know, people who own their land do have you know often have space where they could put up a, a studio in the back. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. that could be both a business. You know, that could be you know relatively easy um, to to mm. do. Uh, be a good kind of part time business. And then every person you know you know that when a guest comes over, they're going to show that thing to them because it's yeah. cool right yeah, yeah. you know and so it would also be uh, just amazing for word of mouth so i, I think yeah. it, would, it would serve multiple purposes and also when when approaching like like habitat for humanity or large organizations um just to give them like a hands-on kind of you know experiential demo i feel like it, it would serve all, many different purposes yeah i like it it's uh you're talking kind of like the accessory dwelling unit concept yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and you know, and we can we can experiment how far we want to get in terms yeah. of like does it have a toilet? Does it have a you know? But it doesn't need to, I don't think. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a byproduct and low hanging fruit of a smaller version of what we're building right now. I mean, that's like right. you know, like could be two hundred fifty six square feet, so like a quarter of the house. It's a quarter house, you know, much much less effort. Yeah, yeah, I, that could be a product. Could be a good product. Um, I think it doesn't meet some of the, I mean, how, how, you know, if we're going to solve housing, does it meet the criteria? It could be part of that solution, like, because with access, accessory dwelling units, you're literally, like, doubling the population that can live on a certain lot. That's why they have that in California. So I guess they have to have some facilities in, like, I don't know if they have a bathroom or kitchen. But, yeah, it's supposed to be, like, a self-contained uh, 
the kind of ADUs in California, I believe they're self-contained living units, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. What happened there? <laughs> I can't. I, wild. Guess I, I can't unmute, or otherwise all hell breaks loose. Yes. But yeah, the only problem is that it, it's only allowed in certain municipalities. Right. So that's um, one thing, and and I don't think it's a mainstream product. Yeah. It's not a solution for housing, but it could be. Here's our bootstrap route to generate some revenue and build from that, refine and uh, generate publicity about it. Sure. I think it would be more doable, but then I think, think about the ultimate market. The ultimate market is going to be much smaller, right? Because yeah. right. um, normal family is not going to do that, right? Yeah. Typically, family units are family units. So, yeah, smaller, smaller, less effort, but also solves less. Well, but it could be a strategic point, though. Yeah. I, it I don't know a strategic that it, point. Would, yep. it, it may not it may not solve the you know, important social issues, but right. in, in in the age of Airbnb, I mean, uh, like I could tell these people being like, oh yeah, let's let's build some Airbnb units. I mean, Airbnb that, that'd be units, huge. yeah. I mean, maybe that's. That's feasible. So that's an investment, and then would pay back for you. Maybe that's like maybe like a lot of people want that, and yeah, we're going to generate passive income with these ADUs that pay themselves. Well, I mean, what are the realistic things? Fifty bucks a day. It costs you. It depends how you build it. Is how much it costs you. It could be like two thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, depending on how you build it. Maybe ten thousand, depending where you are. Well, if it's fifty. Fifty dollars. Uh, well, that's a bunch of days. That would, that's the payback time, you know. Yeah. But maybe it is a good. Well, so fifty. If it's ten thousand. Uh, what is that? How many hours is that? Two hundred. Two hundred rentals. Two hundred days, and you pay back for it. Maybe a a good revenue model for some people. You know, fifty bucks a day would be fifteen hundred a, a month if it's if it's filled. So yeah. Um, so anyway, to wrap up, let's wrap up here. But so, do you want to do that? Uh, basically, or would it be worthwhile time spent to explore actually generating some of these assets during the the evening sessions, or do we just go give up and move back to the city? <laughs> I think it's worth it. Uh, I think it's a good use of time. I mean, this is really. The best, like you're, you're kind of in an echo chamber by yourself, thinking, of, you know, like me first. Of all, I'll look at my notebook and think about things, but it's always nice to bounce ideas around and then try to come up with some actionable things to take away and go mm -hmm. forward. I think this would be really Prince, how about you? What do you think? Any thoughts? Um, I think I'll be valuable once we. Questions about what we're doing, what's going to go on. You know, we have to be really firm, concrete. Um, but yeah, like in the future, we'll figure out exactly what we're going to do with these assets around. Then, yeah, it'll we'll be possible. Okay, then maybe for the next time, we're going to say, uh, let's think about this, what we talked about today. Maybe the next time we meet, which is next Tuesday, we ask ourselves. <coughs> Actually, let's maybe do that Tuesday and Friday because I want Brian to be here, and I think and he has class Tuesday, Thursday. Um, but if we do that for the next time, for the next Tuesday, can we say, can we agree to commit to something? Like maybe we can start with, I want to commit to this, and if we have common ground, we go forward. If yeah. not, this is only our second. Yeah. Our second meeting. Yeah. So we can start next meeting saying, okay, thought about it a little bit. Here's what we want to commit, like individually. Okay, I want to commit to X. Can we do start the next meeting with that? Between show of hands, yes. So between the eco home, between 3D printer, between the whatever else we come up with and bring the table. 
or well I think uh, for me I think the the valuable thing is whatever comes out of these gates we have a higher chance of survival <laughs> to all work together uh, because otherwise like what are we doing like are we gonna just discuss stuff because we can discuss things and do that I think um, that's valuable it's fun but we're not getting anywhere by discussion like we're getting some well I mean I don't know how much value is there in discussion there's well yeah, I mean obviously there is a bunch podcast um, you know we could start a podcast <laughs> yeah, next week <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like because we have certain skills here we can actually put them I think we can put them to use and actually developing the assets that are required because uh, mm. at the end of the day it's like okay we leave here and okay how far along the business and development and, and product development are we? And I think even if we don't know the the answer, well, I feel that I can definitely work on it. Like, um, I definitely feel we can generate useful stuff if we just set our mind to saying, yeah, we're going to collaborate on useful stuff that's, that every, every one of us can use. Wes, what do you think about that? I mean, my opinion is that, um, like, the useful stuff, but, like, the digital materials yeah. uh, related to enterprise could be useful, um, but I don't, I don't think they're actually going to get copied by anyone unless um, we've actually demonstrated that, that we can generate profit and then when, and then we put on the site. Here's how much. Here's how much profit we generated in X period of time. So we're S- smart passive we income model. <laughs> or franchise model. Most people want like, a clear model to follow. If they hear that, yeah, if they hear that you're a supplier or that you want to start an ecosystem or a franchise, they sort of want a step by step approach. And this is more of an open ended. Like, Everyone, please bring your creativity and drive and uh, connections and like you know collaborate together. But it's definitely like not clear. It's not the same as like saying I want to open a McDonald's and uh, you got a three ring binder. And, you know, you know, yeah, but isn't that w- my hope is that we can create that three ring binder? It doesn't matter if we can do it or not. We will do it if if we are set like it's the same thing as uh, the ninety nine to one percent ratio of design time to build time can't we design a lot and then we say these are our goals and what we want to do because the assumption I carry is that just about anything we think up is possible you have to think about clever ways to get there uh, so you don't think we can operate like that I mean that's that's how I'm kinda thinking about it when I say we don't have it but we're designing it so if we design it a lot of the prototyping in the design phase vets it to the point that you're kind of refining it until it's highly likely to work and it informs what we do as the product. So it's a synergistic effort to what we're doing. I don't see the, the prototype at all necessary to say, yeah, we're going to do it because uh, I guess I have the confidence to know that, yeah, we can build things and yes, we can optimize and so forth. So I'm just saying what are those um, milestones that we have to define and reach and then we'll just reach them because I think uh, there's incredible creativity that can happen um, is, does anyone else think like that? Well, what do you want the milestones to be? well the numbers have it's like the numbers have to add up here's a business model that at the end of the day adds up and then the market, like for example, the marketing, then we can already start creating. Oh yeah, it's um, it's what Amazon does. What does Amazon do in their product development? They. they All right, I just dived in here. So hello, is everything working? It's working great. Okay, question: What does Amazon do? They start with a press release. That's that's the best company in the world. I'm trying to do that here. Start with a press release. This is what we want. We're gonna get it, there's and we work back from that. I think there's a conflict between unjobbing and hiring people in entrepreneurship. No. Or didn't they also do something where they were 
like figuring out what the most popular thing was and kind of reverse engineering that with your Amazon Amazon basics <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's the house I would cut it. <laughs> so not a lot of buy into the to the Amazon uh, I, I have that let me let me just point to that article so it's Amazon because um, I thought that was that's a pretty advanced way to do it because that means you're putting forth the commitment to actually make it happen um, but let's see right. Amazon you say it, now you have to deliver on it but that's that's part of the psychology that's how the stuff works at the end of the day it does well, I think Amazon is successful because of the long tail. They offer a bunch of products that other people have developed, and because they offer so many and so many different kinds of the lowest price and the fastest delivery. No, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about their product development. That's how they do their product development. If they want to launch a new product, they engage this product, this process, which starts with a press release. Do you mean that's where they actually do? Or what other product are you, are you thinking about? Like Kindle or, or what? Any product whether it's Kindle, they started as selling books, so they would develop different products, like what now they have movies, they have what financial services, they have like a hundred products, a lot of, lot of different stuff, besides the fact that you shop on Amazon. Well, they have so no demand for those things, like they sell traditional books before they know there's demand for a new kind of book reader, although I agree, like, that's a risk that they took, you know, maybe people don't want e-books, or, you know, AWS, mm. they were already solving this problem for themselves, and then they decided to open it to other people who similar problems so. yeah but that's that's called that's called products it's like it's called launching a product developing a product and th that's the process they go through I don't think the the product you're saying oh are you saying that oh well they're gonna succeed because they're working on reasonable products already they already attracted a lot of attention from customers so you know I would say that so they have their marketing solved in other words and then they can do this I mean they're mm. kind of a, a virtuous cycle, like they have a lot of customers because they already have a lot of customers to launch new products, but at the beginning, mm. you know, they solved it by having the biggest variety. Yeah. No, I see. So you're making a claim that maybe that kind of logic doesn't apply here. We cannot, um, maybe that's not a good model to go by. Uh, I don't think it applies to, to us now. One somewhat unrelated note, I don't know if it's the noise canceling function, which is right above share screen, it's noise suppression, but it might be happening with me too, but kind of in between words, cutting the audio off. Yeah, we needed a better microphone for group video chat. We, yeah, we need a better, we need to address this, this thing, the voice issues and all that. Um, yeah, okay, okay, well that's feedback. Uh, that's a good point, it, it is a point. They, they have captive markets, however, I also think, um, I'm not able to find it on the Amazon, what do they call that? Okay, I, we have the pizza, the pizza rule, they, they do. For new product development, it's a team that can gather about pizza, so a small team, like up to seven people. Let me see if I can find it there. Amazon to pizza rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is under Amazon project teams. And it's under Amazon to pizza rule. So work is done by small teams. Uh, famously, Amazon famously described these as two pizza teams. That is, teams small enough to be fed by two pizzas. Teams work independently, starting with high-level description of what they are trying to accomplish. Any project Amazon is designed via working backwards process. That's what I'm after here, the working backwards. We say, as a company um, starts with a press release that describes what the finished product does and why. It's an internal only service or product. The customer might be another internal team. Then they write a frequently asked questions. They create mock-ups and other ways of defining the customer experience. They go as far as to write the actual user manual describing how the product is used. Only then is the actual product green-lighted for development. Development is st still iterative, informed by addition data from actual users as the product is, is built and tested, but the promise of the final product is where everything starts. That's what I'm calling for here. That I'm calling for that kind of logic. Uh, I think that's... Mm, I, I, uh, do other people find this logic valuable or no?
or this doesn't make sense. I think, it, to me, it does make sense. I, we should define... I, I think it... I, I think it makes... I can't tell about other people time. Uh, I, I think it makes sense, um, uh, and it's, it's kind of consistent with some of like the other stuff we were talking about in terms of like customer interviews and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think one key difference is there, they're trying to determine what, what product to build, whereas we already have a number of products. So in some ways, we need to figure out more what are the kind of decision criteria for our customers and... and, and no, you know, no, no. Hold on, man. Uh, I'll cut you off on that because we yeah. don't. We don't have a product. That's the thing. We're deci- We're still deciding. So we have a lot of projects and things that are like products, but I think it's really like we we don't have that. We're at the exact same stage that Amazon is there. They're deciding. They've got all these options and they're going to say, we're going to write a press release about it. But, but Do you mean prioritizing what which exactly one to is choose? It? Because I may, I may be mistaken, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were saying as in with the various construction sets, like it's not like what is the latest gizmo for people to buy, like the gizmos are there, it's more, if what I'm understanding, what you're saying is which one to develop or push out first, is that correct? We're asking more how do we go appro- approaching a... How do we set up a process here that actually works as in constructive? We're kind of still debating that. We're debating, okay, should we actually generate assets for a product? Should we talk? Should we start a podcast in this enterprise session <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> All um, of the above. Uh, we're, uh, we're trying to get the clarity on how to approach the, the enterprise seminar because we don't have buy-in uniformly here that, oh, yeah, we could just generate assets and go forward with developing this thing that we just simply create in our minds first, do that, here's a press release, we got it, and then work backwards. There's not, we don't have that agreement here. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe think about this, maybe maybe we um, save it for next time, uh, maybe think about it. Um, but maybe outside of that, so what, any other ideas, like what, what could be a useful approach? Because I, I suggested this kind of work backwards approach Here's we s- uh, start with a product and then we go backwards. So what are some of the contending approaches that we can take on to make this time productive? Maybe. I mean, is that a good question? Or um, I guess I'm just going to state things that I've seen. Huge demands like um, filament makers, FDM filament makers. Like there's over on the precious plastics discord you know people they do a lot of injection molding stuff that requires mold so a lot of them are like oh what about a 3d printing filament maker so i, I what you were saying we were gonna dive into that was it in this workshop or the next one you were doing that all you were you had the cat all updated right so that would be huge i think if we get that sent out right to people well i think we're deciding more about how do we approach this enterprise seminar itself. Yeah. Or, um, not not kind of like which list of complaints about. about products too, like how like try and approach all the things of like, oh, it would be great if the company would fix this, or oh, I hate how they designed this aspect. Kind of like pick apart from that. I I guess. I don't know. What should we do now? Should we uh, break away and think about it next time? Or yeah, okay. Let's let's uh, let's finish here. We're into the little overtime here. But yeah, so let's uh, let's take it on again. See if we have more clarity on next next Tuesday, and see if we can take this discussion further or, or into some productivity. Or maybe maybe that's what we do. Maybe we just like nail. You know, just keep talking about the concepts and all of that until something maybe clicks. I don't know. I mean, okay. So, thank you very much, everybody. Mm-hmm. And we will take the third enterprise development session next Tuesday. Oh, Thanks, everyone. Bye.